Okay, you are going to be like that? Then we are going to tell everyone who ends up watching this video what you have been up to and what I'm going to do about it. Hi! <laughs> so appreciate you clicking on this video. It is not one that I would like to make, but the beauties of having a YouTube channel, even problematic situations, end up being beneficial, maybe, to someone who finds themselves in a similar situation. So if things are not all hunky-dory, then at least they serve a purpose and don't go to waste, and we have ourselves a teachable moment here. This is Catacetum Orchid Glade Jack of Diamonds, and it came into my collection as near blooming size in 2018. The first year it spiked for me was 2019, I snapped the spike, and it was a spike pretty much the same size as what you see now. Then in 2020 and in 2021 it bloomed for me, which was amazing, and the orchid grew from strength to strength and huge. As I'm limited with space in my indoor grow space during the winter, this orchid was not a candidate for potting up and leaving as is, so she got divided earlier in 2022 while she was still dormant. 50% of her mass was removed, leaving enough energy for both divisions to progress and grow on. Obviously, the intervention was radical, seeing as the root system was removed in its entirety, which I normally do not do as my setup is LECA and self-watering. With this setup, I maintain the roots while the orchid is dormant, alive. Anywho, the expected drama kicked in. It took forever to get out of its sulk and funk and come out with a new growth. Once the new growth started, I thought, well, great, now we were back on schedule. And I was okay if the new bulb would be smaller than the previous ones, based on the major hacking of the orchid. I also settled for not having this orchid bloom this coming winter, as long as the growth cycle has been reset and we would be good to go for 2023. Well, Jack of Diamonds decided for no reason that I could determine to abort the new growth just as it was leafing out. There was no water anywhere near her, she had bright light, nothing stressful, and at the time this happened there were no thrips or mites to have made the new growth collapse. I was actually excited that I saw another new growth show up while the first one was still green. And I thought, <laughs> my Jack of Diamonds was coping really well with the Radical Division. <laughs> and we were good to go. However, <laughs> the orchid already knew more than I did, and that was that the first growth was already failing, and the visual was not obvious to me. So, whatever, another new growth was on the way. So be it. There was plenty of energy in the back bulbs, although they were shriveled, and plenty of time in the season for this second new growth to develop enough including roots. Of course I was concerned that it would abort that growth as well, because now I'm paranoid. I was suspicious, and I was side-eyeing this orchid. <laughs> and to this day I do not have an answer as to what happened with the first one. Here we are. The second new growth has not even developed all the way. The leaves are not spread out enough, and that could be because the bulb is smaller, but I am not fooled by settling for that reason. This orchid is in trouble, and that's why we're here, but you need a little bit of history if you're not familiar with my channel and are watching a video of mine for the first time with this orchid. Based on the history, I know that this orchid is in trouble, but there are other pointers as to why I know she's in trouble, not just the history, but it is important to know and understand an orchid to be able to interpret what is going on and react, hopefully in a timely manner. I know that this orchid should not be spiking this soon in the season. She should be heading into dormancy, maybe have one or two leaves left that are senescing but clearly going dormant, and then she spikes. The fact that this spike is growing now is a clear signal that she is in trouble, and for that reason I am not going to let her bloom out. Now you can see that the new growth is senescing some of the lower leaves, but all the other ones so far are not showing signs of doing so, and they should be turning yellow, usually around end of November, beginning of December, and that is usually around the time when she starts to show a spike nubbin. But another sign that she is in trouble is that, despite having roots in the pot, when I filled the pot with dry lecker earlier in the season, the roots were not long enough. 
but it had to be done as the temperatures were rising and my dry climate would be a problem for the successful progression of continued root growth. And seeing as dry lecker can be a desiccating agent, I had to administer the first flush of water to make sure that the lecker doesn't take out my roots. For me, personally, my preferences on how I go about cultivating my catacetinae, that first flush was too soon. But either way, something was going to give, whether I water or I don't. The roots that she did have were going to go or stop growing. It would appear that the roots held on and did not rot out, so I was relieved, as you can imagine. But it is not a strong root system. I know that, and so does the orchid, and that is why she is spiking. She is in trouble. It is also clear to see by looking at the back bulbs. They have not recovered even a little bit. So all the energy was being pushed towards the new growth, that didn't mature properly before spiking and none of the energy was able to be transmitted into the back bulbs to help them recover and plump up at least a little bit more. So if you find yourself in a similar situation and you see these signs on your catacetinae, bulb not forming properly, weak root growth, shriveled back bulbs, not going into dormancy and it spikes prematurely based on the history of the orchid, do not let your orchid bloom out. But before you cut the spike too soon, just because you see a spike and want to help your orchid save energy, do not cut the spike until the buds have formed as you see on my Jack of Diamonds. Catacetinae are tough and they really do have a mind of their own. I have mad respect for this group of orchids. In my opinion, they really transmit some form of authority that many other orchids do not. So as with any other orchid, when it comes to cutting spikes prematurely to conserve energy, always wait for the buds to actually form before doing so. This way, the hormones are already way ahead and past their programmed schedule to mobilize another spike. The orchid's bio clock is mobilizing the hormones for the next phase of its growth cycle. And I just mentioned that catacetinae project a form of authority which could result in this orchid attempting yet another spike during the right time of year after the leaves have started to drop. If that were to be the case, I will do the same thing. However, I will monitor the status of the back bulbs. If they start to shrivel further, then the spike comes off before the buds form. And I will keep repeating this until this orchid gets the hint it will not bloom this season. If I want to try and save this orchid, this is the best course of action. If she still decides to decline further, then I have done what I believe was the right thing to do because allowing this orchid to bloom out will be the end of her. There is not enough energy for blooms and then for a new growth to form in spring of 2023. And I am treading lightly with this one, having lost another one already this year. By contrast, my Fred Clark Yara after Dark Black Pearl at the same decimation done to it early in 2022, I have 30% of the orchid left in the pot and it has just gone insane with this year's new growth. Both orchids were handled in the same way and the difference between the two is astounding. So if you have similar symptoms, seeing a premature spike should make the alarm bells go off and that spike has to come off or else your orchid is going to be in even more trouble. I hope that this video will serve its purpose for someone. Maybe it's too late for some, but I hope that any future cases like these will not go down the road of becoming a beautiful memory, a once upon a time situation orchid in a collection. And I hope that my Jack of Diamonds won't become a once upon a time either. Time will tell. The moment she pushes another spike, believe you me, I am going to put the orchid back in the viewfinder and we're going to be discussing and analyzing how she's doing. So if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, I would encourage you to do so because I have no idea of knowing if that's going to happen and if it happens, when it's going to happen. And I would hope that you wouldn't want to miss any updates. Thank you so, so much. Your support is appreciated. And let me know if you have any questions on a specific case in your collection. And if I can help in any way, I'll be happy to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. 
Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye. Buds forming and separating themselves from the stem. That is when you cut the spike of any orchid that is under duress. And then hopefully she will recover and thank you for it with a proper, decent, healthy, gorgeous blooming in the next cycle.